Hi, what's up? Um, oopsie, sorry, I <laughs> I recorded content and then it deleted. Ish, this is an Android. Android, when you are busy recording a video and then you lose the footage because the phone gets hot or whatever. Sorry, and then you stop recording because the phone gets hot or whatever. It, it deletes the footage, like it's just gone. It's lost to the system forever. That's not the, the same with an iPhone, so I guess that's the reason why I miss iPhone. But anyway, it is what it is. I am only at 3%. The battery that I used to charge, or now it's on 4%, so it continues to charge good. The battery that I was using to charge at some point, the charger, sorry, it, um, yeah, it was low quality or whatever. So now I'm using the right charger and it should continue to help me along. So I lost that footage. I think I was speaking for like 15 minutes, so it wasn't that much. I am grateful for it, however. Um, uh, in the time when I've been gone, I've been getting frustrated pulling my hairs out and everything, but I also uh, found the dress that I was talking about. So I told you guys about, where did I last end off? I think I was in the kitchen. Yes, this cousin of mine was in the kitchen with me in this dream. Please go check out the previous part to gauge your bearings because you're gonna need to do exactly that. Okay, yeah, uh, otherwise you're gonna be like, oh, you're just ramming from one place to another. Well, there's a few, there's a part one. Please go check that out all the way to the end to be able to continue listening right now. Uh, anywho, so I then find my, I exit this bedroom because of my cousin telling me, because clearly you're frustrated in here and she was mean-spirited in the dream alongside wearing just a whole bunch of red and red always tells me that there's witchcraft involved now in that dream i told you that the bedroom that i was in was narrow it was lowly it was little it was nothing at all okay and i was being laughed at by these two colleagues one of which was like eventually trying to comfort me because he realized that this thing could kill me uh i then go into the rest of the house and the rest of my mother's house in my dream is unlike my bedroom it's the exact same house with the, all that glory that it wears in waking life it was beautiful as it was beautiful in waking life quite the exquisite house and what i was being shown with that was the environment that i was in that then i would thanks to all of this cursedness in the dream essentially supposed to basically end up at okay i'm trying to help people out here also discover cues find hints in dreams that they get about activity that is being done against them by people in their lives uh so that you can nicely avoid them because they rarely ever repent they rarely ever do a better thing they don't acknowledge what they've done neither do they stop only difference between you knowing and not is that when you don't know they get to stay in your life and patronize the living daylights out of you while monitoring you and continuing to go back to the drawing board to wreak havoc in your life but when you do know they then gaslight the living daylights out of you uh, afflict you with accusations of insanity and even sometimes try and put you in a psychiatric hospital so uh letting them know is not an option like don't tell them just move on with your life and oftentimes when you do move on i don't know if i've already communicated this in the last part because i lose my bearings if if they do know so if you move on they tend to also be prepared to let you go i made mention of how it is that all of these people from my past after i lost everything they were strangely distant they were all of a sudden far far away in the yonder and i was like where's the support where's the camaraderie why aren't you having my back that's how you sometimes know that somebody has done stuff to you when you do finally go the, to the trash and through the crap that you go through um in these streets they will then be standoffish or they will not even be there for you they will just let you crash and burn and not be there yeah yeah anyway so they're avoid worthy that's what i'm getting at but i'm busy telling a dream over here guys all right so in this dream i go into the kitchen and i just want to explain to you a little bit of my routine my itinerary the way that i used to be back in the day so you can understand that people don't want people to be people they don't want people to walk in all of the glory and the splendor that jesus christ will have them walk in like if the lord has created you with a, a particular glory they're not interested in it yeah lovers of selves of self lovers of money jealousies like it's written in god's word that anger is overwhelming and fury is a flood but who can stand before jealousy like they will literally take all of their envy all of their jealousy yeah i thoroughly i literally cannot do work before 8 p.m it's so wrong because i need to be able to get exercise out the way seeing as i've been given a curfew this phone overheats what am i gonna do anyway anger is overwhelming fury is a flood but who can stand before jealousy it appears absolutely nobody can stand before jealousy uh so whatever it is that you have been given blessed with by god from 
the get go. People just don't want you walking in it, like for whatever reason. They they thoroughly imagine it is a feasible pursuit to extract all the pretty girls off Facebook or Instagram. They imagine it's a feasible pursuit to take all the really talented people in the office building where they work and leave just them. They think it's a feasible pursuit to just sweep out everything that makes you ever so slightly uncomfortable in any ecosystem. So I had my own suite of things that I liked to do. I love to get my body all dolled up. I love to get like my skin back then was also quite clear. I, I liked to adorn myself. I, I, I mentioned yesterday that I like jewelry. All right. I like to adorn myself. I, I like all outfits, hair. I, I was that chick. I was that chick. Like my hair was always on fleek. My outfits on fleek. Everything was always on fleek. And it was that fleek lady that got me essentially accosted into oblivion. Do you understand what I'm saying? That was in my dream now. The one, the woman that I woke up as with all of that panic, then walked into an environment where she was the woman that she was in waking life at that time in life and she was the glorious chick right i told you guys that like getting all dolled up yeah was my whole thing so i'm like i was born in 1984 and our instagram in the come up was facebook and i if at all was not pulled the rug from under my feet i would have likely had quite a you know healthy following on instagram for basically fashion and hair and all these lifestyle things that some people are allowed to do and fly like a bird i would have done that i would have climbed the bandwagon on on instagram fast and furious if at all i was given an opportunity to but i got saved right and because i got born again i even walked out of facebook but even then on facebook i used to upload quite a lot of my photos a lot of my lifestyle and all that jazz i would upload it but then i like i said i got born again and when i got saved i ditched facebook because it just felt like it was an addiction and an idol an idol that i needed to let go of so I let go of that idol. I don't know when this person is ever going to switch off their alarm because there is no wind outside. Why is it going off like the demonic attack? Anyway, whatever. Let's just talk above this. Hopefully the individual is home and they're going to switch off their alarm because it's really distracting me. I can't even think. I can't even think. I can't even think. I would have um, entirely taken over. Not taken. Oh, you see this alarm. Like switch off your alarm. For crying out loud. Like, yo, I can't. You know, no. The longer I lament about it, the more the devil is going to realize that it's a frustration for me and just keep it going. So let me try and speak about that alarm in the background. It is what it is. I struggle to multitask and when I'm focusing on something and stuff like that is happening outside, it's such a massive destruction. Destruction. I can't even deal. Anyway, I used to put my life on Facebook. I used to put my life on social media and share it and there are people out there feel like literally who are sitting outside of people's lives telling themselves that over my dead body not on my watch will you continue to do abc like in front of me there are people that are that psychopathic and crazy and the sad and disquieting thing about them is that they live among us and they are your friends they're your family members they're literally encircling themselves with human beings telling themselves that seeing as this thing is anonymous and unseen they're gonna just get to do whatever they want to do i was a woman in her 20s do you understand what i'm saying and i was i guess with a bright future i had broken into certain spaces that i wanted to break into i had worked hard and i was just ramping up and ramping up and ramping up on top of that i was beautiful and everything of mine was in a neat little bunch everything of mine was kept together everything of mine was just working swimmingly it appeared that i would inevitably become also somebody's really gorgeous wife and i would then have you know some i would then be i would then have a really great guy like a wonderful husband and the children and for me it's like the life that i was recording on social media at the time and posting it awarded me so much envy that i ended up basically being communicated to by a bunch of psychopaths that imagine that it's feasible for whatever strange reason to just knock everybody out of the way that's gonna make you feel like your life sucks i had a whole bunch of such individuals looking at me and then they made a decision that, Karabo, okay, so you've shown us your 20s and your, up, your, your career as you're on the come up, you're ramping up, and you're going to just keep on taking all these photos and showing us your crappy life. So what we're going to do is stop you. Because over my dead body before I see you get married, over my dead body before I see you have that, that pregnancy that you're going to flaunt all over Instagram, over my dead body that you're ever going to show me your 
you know the food that you're cooking for your family over my dead body that you're going to show me your christmas decorations over my dead body that as you continue to grow and grow that you're also going to show me whatever comes with life as it continues to grow as a result of that i've literally lost an entire decade of my life i was thrown into this from the age of 29 i am 39 like a whole entire decade do you understand what i'm saying because over people's dead bodies apparently that i'm ever going to get anywhere that's how freaking unacceptable this stuff all is and yet people are gliding right over it it might appear as if though my life is an, an, an anomaly basically i'm living a dystopia on the far extreme of the normal distribution and so nobody can uh, uh, relate but you must understand all of these randos sitting outside of people's lives saying over my dead body are prospering to topple over people's lives the only difference is that some individuals do not completely fall splat on the ground and then into the casket <laughs> some people just merely lose a great husband they end up getting wed off to some mean guy that she cannot for the life of her put up on her facebook page like she they end up getting all these chalk blocks they end up suddenly being frustrated in the pursuit of a career they all of a sudden find themselves in what used to be basically in what would be the equivalent of a less fabulous life and so now they just don't have the energy to post it there are people who are living five percent of a life in comparison to the full 100 percent because they've got like a nasty friend yeah it's literally happening that way and it is very difficult to detect this thing if you are not basically clued in if you don't have your eyes opened peel them have the lord basically inspire you to arise from the dead oh sleeper awake that christ might shine on you and i'm trying to perhaps give some people hints as to what this stuff looks like and how these people also act and i've got a cousin that i've already spoken about so very many times and it's not the same one that keeps on wreaking havoc in my life by the way not the for five seconds she'll be back tomorrow the one that used to be my best friend not that one it's another cousin the, yeah the one that i'm busy describing right now and she's been all up in my business wreaking quite a handsome amount of uh, havoc for the past couple of years especially because yeah now she still has access to citing me every so often largely my family does not see me very much but this cousin every so often does see me because on a relationship and i live my mom yeah this chick is destructive in a way that i've been trying to ignore because it's like oh when are you gonna get exhausted because at this point if your conscience is not strangling you like a noose around your neck you are no longer human you are basically a zombie because unlike everybody else that keeps on wreaking havoc in my life they don't actually see me sometimes like how in the world do you do that to somebody type establishment thing anyway whatever so this like random cousin is one of those people like this these random two former friends of mine these guys that i used to hang with they were my boys but now like we can't i can't like what's good mm. nah bo. it's like they told themselves would you over my dead body there are people thoroughly out in these streets saying over my dead body before you will carry the term swimmingly your pregnancy there are literally people that crazy and people are not even trying to listen to what i'm saying you're in trouble like the life that i lived that i was at that stage living the lord was basically telling me it's under siege it's being threatened i was like i told you guys that if at all i had stayed in the world and become a little bit more like you know if i had stayed in the world and of course on social media i would have of course ended up on instagram i would have of course ended up there and i would have garnered for myself a handsome following because i was a fashion icon if you want to call it that i had a thing about hair i had a i actually had opened a blog and i was busy taking photos and then i got disheartened because i lost the content uh, due to the fact that my cell phone i'm on nine percent and this phone is okay like yeah I, oh goodness no don't put makeup on my face yeah anyway yeah uh i was taking photos and i was showing you just what under heaven it is that um i put on facebook and i i wrote a whole article in my blog basically sharing that same sorrow and every single time i i try to show people my past life that they might see why people did this to me it always hurts because it forces me to go into facebook my old facebook not the one that's recent and see all the people that told themselves over their dead bodies if at all i should i ever walk ahead in the future and do whatever it is that i'm presently doing from strength to strength increasing in grace increasing in mercy increasing in glory over their dead body should i ever be allowed to do any such thing as that i wrote a whole article in my blog like a speaking about that and thankfully it's one of the most recent ones i haven't written in months it could actually be almost a year now since i last wrote um so this would be one of the most the uppermost articles really that i wrote if anything i feel as if though it is likely the last one that i wrote 
because my the images inside my blog in my gallery my uh what do you call this my media library uh, the uppermost ones evidence basically content that i just recently uploaded like the last few video uh, the last few blogs uh, i would actually implore you to go and check out my my blog my ministry uh in my wordpress account it's cranberry chronicles dot com uh, cranberry chronicles with a z dot wordpress dot com and in that particular uh, what do you call this I'm, i actually want to go back to that video in that particular blog sorry in that particular article in part yeah this thing that i'm talking about this very thing ikibuang is explained in greater de depth it's a whole article that i wrote where is this thing come on i'm so frustrated right now by everything that's going on i'm just correct about i lost footage guys and i was already like speaking my mind all up in that girl okay cool here it is that my blog is the um, I just want, I'm taking a photo with my phone and then I'm going to like flip the phone and show you the the photo that I took uh, so that you can see what under heaven people just did not want me walking in. I was already writing at the time when I lost everything. What in the world? Uh, this is my blog. The landing page of my blog. What you're looking at right now is that right there is the line of the tribe of Judah who is Christ who is against the lion. Right. Cranberry Chronicles with a Z dot wordpress.com but thankfully i don't even have to like spell it out for you because the link is right below in my descrip description blog box and in that video no, sorry not video sorry in my blog i wrote about this very phenomenon that i'm currently talking about so that's why i'm sick and tired of repeating myself the severe human sacrifices in south africa i am exhausted of, of repeating myself god preserved my hair and skin despite deep persecution and stress um which video which the usa the frequency the severe i think it might be the severe human sacrifices in south africa so let me just go inside that particular article and see if at all like nah it's not uh uh come on man yes like guys yo like everything it's just so slow and i can't deal like i'm feeling a depth like an, an extremity of frustration but anyway whatever nah i think it might be god preserved my hair and my skin and my blah blah let me just go down because there i uploaded a whole bunch of i had to go to my old facebook all right I had to go to my old Facebook and in going to my old Facebook, therefore then be subjugated to the tyranny of looking at my, my, that world that I left behind. I hate going there. Like I've been given so much trauma. God is about to end this whole nonsense on the earth if the wicked do not repent. I think that might be it. Yeah, that was a long article where I put in a lot of pigs, lots and lots of pigs. Um, yeah, is it? It was, yeah quite lengthy you can go and read it in it i was basically sharing why it is that people did this to me i put photos in there of my former friends um and family uh yeah all these people that wreaked havoc yeah it's definitely this one it's called god is about to end this whole nonsense on earth and if the wicked do not repent they might not be able to in the tribulation they might not be able to in the tribulation and in it i have placed a lot of photos of me back then and these are the images essentially that got me devastated like destroyed utterly by the very people some of them that are in these photos not all of them uh, i used to oh goodness just the fact that i cannot page through maybe i should have just stayed in my gallery because you know it just makes life that much easier i wanted to show you guys just one photo maybe just one one of like a hairstyle of mine and then another of okay this is not gonna work but how long is it gonna take for me to get in that page i'm, I'm just gonna go to my gallery the thing is that th it's thumbnail size or ever so slightly larger than a thumbnail in the gallery and you might not be able to see properly with my phone but you can go and check it out in my blog yeah that whole way of living is what it is that was come up against but also the very same thing that in my dream was prominent like basically god was telling me in that dream that you are about to lose or there is a threat on all of these things that you have worked for you work like a dog to get yourself out of obscurity you work like a dog to make sure that you don't stay in a mold a grain you work like a dog to be able to afford yourself a dress from trainery you work like a dog to afford to take yourself to a dermatologist so that you could clear your skin completely. You work like a dog. 
so that you could afford to go to a stylist that's gonna plait your hair that beautifully the stylist of which ended up betraying me too with sorcery like it was like my life has just been so freaking hard because of people who keep on telling themselves over my dead body that that stylist did what she did to me because she wanted me to give her more clients i used to refer quite a lot of people to her and she decided that she's going to wreak all that havoc in my life because she wanted more it was greed like it, you know i've been hurt by people who not only came against that which was glorious that I had going for myself, but others who had everything they needed in me, but then made a decision that it wasn't enough. And with that, I mean, I made the analogies the other day of it being like maverick spend, insisting on spending uh, money on something that you don't need, given that you already have everything you need right here like right now it's like literally at your disposal it's right here right now but you insist on getting better and then you discover that it wasn't broken but you try to fix it and then you try to go back to some people mm. i spoke about that the other day that's how people hurt me and some of them it guys <laughs> like can we not just live that, that's what i'm getting at can we not just exist like do we not have a right to exist do we not have a right i mean if the lord has a man and a woman together and then the two of them produce a beautiful child does that kid not get to live a full life only because there are other people that are uncomfortable with their beauty if if the lord has put together a man and a woman that have put a, in a baby a great deal of intelligence is that kid not allowed to basically pioneer innovations in this world without people being like over my dead body like how is that even a sustainable planet how is that even a thing uh i want to show you like a f some photos i'm just gonna I need to be at a decent distance to show you my insta hair those are the kinds of hair okay i told you guys that i used to have natural hair okay uh that was natural hair that you're seeing over there over there yeah it's natural hair that has been moropozad like plaited and these are the things that i would put on social media and people would be like not next year not the day after not tomorrow retake it, maybe somebody else not you who because that's the thing like when envy is so exquisite when envy is so ridiculous that you then are like not next year you're gonna be disquieted with anybody doing it next year and the day thereafter not garabo well you're also gonna say not lerato you're also gonna say not pinky you're also gonna say not tepo you're proper there's just no end to the wickedness of of the human race i want to show you my skin the skin that i'm suffering so much right now with clearing the hyperpigmentation of i told you guys that i've always been that afro chick it's not going to be 100 percent clear y'all because it's a photo of a photo and there's all this glare but that's i'm trying to show you my skin like it was clear very like very clear and that's my natural hair okay like look you're not gonna get the go into my blog you'll see the original photos um there's quite a few of them i don't know what else here i can take a photo of what and like people were just like over my dead body Karabo, and i'm like i guess over everybody's dead body then because no one wants anyone to live like absolutely nobody uh yeah uh skin like oh goodness like why is abona listen to this thing why isn't it showing properly yeah that was my uh skill more or less i mean like i said go check out the originals you're gonna see them looking a lot better uh because right now i'm just have got some pretty poor quality uh the hair has always just had a thing about growing <sighs> never really struggled with hair growth and these are the things that i would put on my like historical version of instagram uh but it's facebook and people were like over my dead body that's me that's my hair that's how much it had grown uh, it's all natural just by the way it's all natural 4c uh no relaxer and then ah, go bonagali. like it's just so bad it's just so incredibly bad the way that's the best that i can do for you over there um yeah maybe even this photo i didn't intend to zoom in on it but since it's there that's the hey look at that morobozo vibes like check it check it check it like yeah just absolutely lovely anyway yeah these are, i mean there's just there's a lot there's a lot is there anything else that i can show you here holy bonta the skin and the lifestyle Ugh, that's i'm just so hot like retake i'm so so hot like i'm so i'm boiling and as hot as i am i'm concerned that this phone is gonna stop recording 
Yeah, this environment. I, I saved that content because I could see the phone was getting hot. It was so hot that it wasn't even charging. It makes it so difficult for me to record this place. Like, winter basically just works out better for me. Anyway, but I'm here. Am I not? Yeah. I'll just keep recording in 10 minute segments, saving and then cooling my phone with the fan in the back and then coming back because that's frankly the only way it appears um, around this. Look, y'all gonna have to go to my Facebook, uh, check out the hair. Y'all, not Facebook, sorry, but you're gonna have to, if you're interested, you're gonna have to go to my my blog. My, you could go to, nah, Facebook does not have anything. Not the Facebook, um, not the Facebook. What is going on here? Not the Facebook. Uh, that is linked to my blog not my blog sorry but what is this my my youtube channel there it's basically it's just ministry and it's something that i hooked up recently uh it's not my old life but this is what causes people uh, sorry this is what people make a decision to over my dead body and those of you that don't have oh come on those of you that do not have oh goodness that wasn't supposed to happen that do not have the level of sorrow or, sever or severity that I'm going through. I don't know if at all I had said this in that part or in the previous part or this one. I said that the Lord for his own purposes for whatever reason has seen it fit to give me this issue, this problem in order that it's it's what he's chosen me to do. And so I'm really suffering. Uh, but not everybody goes through what I'm going through. Uh, oh, come on. Not everybody goes through what I'm going through. That's my hair. Hi, Khudile. This is the hair that I've been trying to get back to. That's also 4C hair. It's not um, relaxed, but that is blow dried. However, you know, as I'm Mizukula, guys, my hair still grows. But unfortunately, you know, I'm taking care of it myself. And so I don't have a stylist. I don't have a person that's helping me along. Uh, Godwa, it's, it's doing well. Okay, I just showed you hair, but I don't think there is, there isn't a photo here that I can show you that has got perhaps the glory of like getting all dolled up because that also used to be like a whole thing in the gay it's a oh come on what are you doing uh uh oh goodness uh take the photo just take the photos and and, and allow me to like see them for crying out loud like really is it that rough uh anyway y'all uh, i'm kind of hoping that you can see like you know the fashion posts and what have you i used to you know dress up for my body uh type thing i was very happy with fashion if that even makes sense and there were people who were like go and do that somewhere else Gahabo. and i'm like but i'm on this earth with you so how are you somewhere else get right guy where under heaven am i gonna go like where like where am i gonna go and do this somewhere else like somebody tell me where am i gonna go like i have literally been refused a whole freaking life People are aging me. They are insisting that I turn 50 now, that I'm on my way to 40. They are literally insisting that that be a thing. They're wasting my life, wasting Impiloyam, insisting that I go absolutely nowhere because over my dead body, I guess then if that's the case here, if that's what we're saying, if over my dead body is what we're doing, then are you not then asking to die? Are you not asking to cease to exist on this planet? Are you not begging to get out? Are you not begging for the Lord to be like, since you insist that the only thing that is going to enable Garabo to live is if you are dead, then I guess die. Like, is that not what people are doing? Is that not what they're doing when they sit on people's chests and necks and refuse to let them live? When you are telling yourself, unless they are substandard, they are Every, like papa everybody just gotta be in a grain everybody just gotta like be this like flat lining thing this thing that's coding in the hospital is that what everybody gotta be is that what everybody gotta be i i'm gonna go you guys y'all are gonna have to go to facebook okay not facebook what is this that's me and then two other friends all that is my hair not a single iota of what do you call this uh fake hair all up in that grill i had some pretty beautiful hair and we've got goals to basically get all that back and then some. All right. But this is what I got for now. This is the hair that I just presently I'm sporting. I'm trying to get it to a certain place. Look, you've seen enough. But let me just put this down. Is this thing charging or is it hot again? Phone overheating. Don't close. Yo, goodness gracious. Well, this whole thing with my phone and this phone is like relatively decent. Like, yeah. It's because of this environment. It's just so hot in here that my phones overheat when 
I'm recording videos, so I don't even know what to do. All the more reason why I should just finish this message real quick. In that dream, I went on to move to the kitchen, my mother's kitchen, which was a very pristine, beautiful kitchen, okay? And I was standing in front of the microwave, and I was wearing this dress from Trinary. In my dream, I was wearing this dress. I found it gold, trouble. Haven't worn it in a minute. Uh, what is this? Yeah, Trinary Yako Woolies. That's what's good. Uh, a very beautiful dress. If at all I'm standing up straight, you might be able to see it for what it is. It's of course a little bit creased, but it's a very beautiful dress. Yeah, and uh, back then it was not all creased like this and what have you. have not worn it in perhaps like years, this dress. But it's just kind of hanging multiple type establishment thing. Um, and I was rocking these like earrings. I w my hair was looking similar to what it is that was the one of the hairstyles that I showed you now now in my dream and I looked like I was about to go to work but I was still in that frantic frenzy that mode I was still panicking and hyperventilating having uh, an attack because of the fear of those spiders that I had just seen and then this cousin of mine as I'm standing by the microwave looking like I'm about to go to work so I have not lost my career i have not lost anything in this dream or at least but i've lost everything haven't i yeah i'm all panicked i'm in that particular frenzy and in that mode and then she stands in front of me go kitchen counter she puts her hand on the kitchen counter looks at me since we're in the kitchen i'm like my head is like right by the microwave it's one of those mounted microwaves um yeah uh, and she looks at me on some so where's your husband <laughs> where's your husband now like she was asking me with a cocky attitude in my dream on some where's your husband now almost as if though she was expecting that no such thing is coming my way back then i was when i had that dream i could have been like 28 27 and here it is that a person was gloating about this husband that i trusted was coming from the lord i i i already described these boys these men that were laughing at me one of whom was comforting me after realizing how inappropriate the laughter was i believe i, I had explained up to that level the last time in the dream right yeah uh and I, I i i described their stature that they were both very small men tiny for their age small for men they were they were they basically had the body shape of like 14 year olds 13 year olds like just little people little men okay yeah that just did not grow past a certain uh, size once they were growing uh type thing anyway whatever my cousin is out here with her hand on her waist scanning me up and down in this red outfit all right and then she's like so is your husband now you know when i woke up from that dream i was confused as to why is she mocking the prospect of me getting married i was only 27 and i was waiting on the lord for a husband well i mean that explains it doesn't it now that a whole decade has progressed hasn't it that was a dream showing me the future that was a dream showing me the arrogance of gloating people women maybe in particular when years have progressed with me waiting in holiness in chastity for god for what it is that i ask for in prayer and me not getting it when a whole decade has progressed and them literally priding themselves in the fact that Onanzali busy Abu and Yoko on the rooftops talking about how God is going to give her a husband, Ugu Pimanch. That was the, the constitution that she was wearing in my dream. That's how she was feeling. That's how she was carrying herself in my dream. That was me feeling my phone. She was carrying herself in my dream with a whole pompous, entitled, never mind entitled, but gloaty. Like it's like she was gloating. That you since I'm here, you're still waiting. Wait, me seeing me. Like, what exactly are you waiting for? This thing that you're waiting for is a pie in the sky dream. Same person that threw cigarettes into my bedroom. Same person that tried to throw me to a married man in a dream. And now she's out here holding her waist on some where's the husband? And guess who under heaven was standing in front of me on some I'll marry you. I'll marry you. One of the little pip squeaks I used to work with. That was laughing at me initially the one that comforted me the one that was like a ski uh eventually however starting out laughing at me in my dream he was already a very short little man in waking life in my dream he was even smaller it's like i was towering over him it's almost as if though i was a nephilim in size while he was just a mere human sized person i was a giant 
and this little ant-sized man in the kitchen is standing there that this guy was also very perverted um let me just put that out there the other one was not so much of a perv right remember there were two guys the one that was laughing hysterically that continued to laugh at me could not care less that my my like i'm, I'm, I'm in a lot of sorrow uh type establishment thing yeah no he had already left he was nowhere to be found in the dream after basically i got out of the bedroom uh, but this one followed me to the kitchen and in waking life the one that followed me to the kitchen that was initially comforting me saying aski saski saski si yeah in waking life like in reality he was perverted he was extremely perverted he, like he was always throwing these sexual innuendo that all over the show he was um constantly talking about the dirty you know talking about all of his dalliances with all these different girls in his hood and oh, how it is that he doesn't take Imediake seriously like he because he was a friend instead of anything of a love interest or whatever he was free to talk like that about women in the presence of what would be female colleagues that he's not trying to fraternize with so i got to see the sordid side of him the ugly side of him that's the, just the disquieting thing about being friends with guys you sometimes hear or see how it is that they actually truly feel about women thinking that you're different like you think that when because this guy you're not you're, you're not jollying with him that you're safe but if that's how like i don't know guys i've never had male friends ever in my life that did not speak trash and smack about women literally there's no one that's ever honored or respected women because they were in the presence of other women they've always just spoken so much rubbish about women I, I was naive to think that where i'm dating it's different i was naive to think that where it is that they're not friends but lovers that i'm spoken highly of I, i've literally never had like when i was in the learnership program at liberty life i had nothing i was two girls in a crew of guys it was me and this one chick and then the rest of them nearly by shiman and these guys used to speak so much rubbish about women including the chicks they were dating like yeah the chicks that were dating in the program there was this one guy that ended up dating a chick that was part of the the learnership and in the beginning he was like smitten and talking well about her on some i like her she's so sweet whatnot i'm crushing heavy and they start dating they then have trouble in their relationship and the things that that, that this guy was saying about this chick and yo guys he, he, like raw like details even about their sex life and what have you and i was just we were shocked like my my friend and i were shocked like that girl the other girl because remember it was two chicks and uh, guys and she, something like five or six guys and in, in a crew of ch in a crew the crew was like about five or six guys and two girls all right mm. and these guys never spoke well about women like it was just never good and my friend and i would laugh like the chick the one that was also a, a girl we would laugh thinking that <laughs> we're exempt thinking that we're different like that where we go and frequent where we go and, and make out with guys and kiss them and call them our lovers that it's different with us that with, they would never do that to us but guys are like that every guy i've ever been friends with has always spoken really badly about girls like really horribly really horribly really really terribly like literally without fail i should have seen it back then i should have seen the naivety but then again you know south africa is this gender-based violence country that's full of animosity against women so you know like these things have a root cause they have a beginning they have a um i'm doing edits in the background guys so i'm looking up there uh these things have got a starting point they don't just merely manifest overnight so the wickedness of men killing women in this country i suppose it it had its roots back then and here it is that i had these two male friends they were friends like literally nothing could ever happen between us especially considering they were tiny in size in comparison to me who is so tall i tower above most guys that i meet in this country mm, that's what's good so african men are very short i think i've already mentioned that uh, just because i was friends with these dudes and we used to hang out and we were like good peoples and what have you i thoroughly imagined that i was exempt i literally believed that no such you know incendiary activity would ever spur from my boys <laughs> uh, against especially me and here it is that i saw it then spiritually didn't i the same way that this guy was with women was the way that he thought about i guess me too like girlfriend that he was always cheating on that he had no respect for that he did not regard with any level of, of honor i was just like her it's just that i was not dating him and so i imagined that was different but literally it was just the same thing y'all will get hurt 
you will get hurt like if a man does not repent and give their lives to christ they will inevitably follow into some man cave of disaster they will inevitably just do exorbitant wickedness against women like the only thing that regulates them is christianity i promise you my ex-boyfriend was this great guy i thought he was great until he massacred me because of listening to counsel from guys like they can do nothing but talk rubbish about us they have got to be saved there's no other way out of it unless of course i've only ever met monsters in which case it's like mm, everything you meet but like really can i grow up from the age of zero up until 30 meeting nothing but whack dudes are you gonna tell me not even one did i encounter not even one in a friend not even one there's a problem with men in this country and if if they don't want to admit it then you know what do you it is no wonder South Africa has got a problem with gender-based violence. These, the, this guy, this friend um, of mine in waking life was extremely licentious. He was less serious, like in the worst way. He was heavy into sexual innuendo. I found, I found him incredibly um, in, inappropriate once I turned to Christ. He started to become grieving extremely. But prior to my redemption, I used to just sit him out. I used to write him out and I thought, oh, God, he's a friend. Like he will always just be a friend. Like that's it. Like he's, because he's a friend, Hey, whatever. You would literally even think that those women are actually evil, the way that this guy used to speak about women. And like I said, it was very licentious, the type of dude to talk about what it is that he would do to a woman that he's crushing on in the office. Hanka monka, ngamweza this and that. And it's like the details are like, whoa, dude, spare us. Like, gross. Yeah, he was like that. And that salivating licentious creep that was essentially like a little pervert. Um, however, having never manifested pervert towards me because I was a friend, right? He manifested that perversion in my dream. That perversion that he used to speak about other girls concerning. He was literally... He was like licking his lips in my dream and scanning me up and down almost like he wanted to rip off my clothes. When my cousin was busy looking at uh, me on some... So where's this husband that you claim is coming? Uwe, where is he? When she was busy mocking me, this guy popped up looking tiny tiny while i was like a giant in his presence and he was licking his lips up, up, up what is this like you know prepare you know when you prep, prep to eat a meal yeah this like gesture that guys do when they're expecting to sleep with a girl type thing yeah he was out just gesturing all like that you guys looking at me salivating in the way that he usually salivates in waking life and just in the same way that in waking life i used to look at him like dude ew, how do you say that about women i found him disgusting in my dream i found him utterly disgusting in my dream and yet this dude was out just salivating after me short and tiny as he was too small for me looking i literally look like a nephilim in comparison to a regular sized human being in comparison to this dude right um and yet he was salivating after me imaginative that he's going to be my husband and my cousin was laughing at me because of the the, the presence of this guy that upon realizing that i'm freaking out i'm literally out of my mind in shock as to what's happening to my life at present yeah uh this guy i get it he was the one that was comforting me after however causing free me to freak out he's the one that caused me to freak out him and his friend he's now salivating after me anticipating that i'm just gonna take him as a husband in waking life i find him disgusting in the dream i find him disgusting and then my cousin is laughing at me because that's the only man that's out here trying to propose marriage to me in my dream and then it ended that dream i got when i was like i said 27 over a decade ago I did not understand it. I brushed it off until upon recalling it. Once I had lost everything, I dis I realized what it was saying. I realized what it was saying. Let me save this before I lose it. In fact, let's move to the next part to finish this off.